Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we've got a video for you on some uh, current events in naval news. Secretary of the Navy Brightwaith has just announced a series of new names for future Navy ships which have been authorized but are not quite under construction yet. These names cover a series of uh, a whole, a whole bunch of different types of ships, and uh, some of them are in line with the current naming traditions, and some of them are way out of left field. The one thing to keep in mind is Secretary Brightway, throughout his brief term as Secretary of the Navy, has uh, shown significant interest in U.S. naval history. He has supported Naval History and Heritage Command by authorizing construction of a national museum of the U.S. Navy, one that is not on a Navy yard like their current uh, Navy museum. And he has supported museum ships like the Battleship New Jersey by authorizing us and personally interceding to make sure that we're, we were able to strip parts off of USS Charleston, which had uh, Battleship spare parts on her in storage. Um, besides the actual physical support he's given to naval history, he has also um, shown an interest in naval history in his choices of ship names for future warships. With President Trump's term ending, uh, Secretary Brightwaith will be leaving office at that time, and so he has uh, initiated a project to make sure that all of his successors in the office of the Secretary of the Navy uh, have a constant reminder of the naval history and heritage that they are stewards of. And uh, while I'm not going to give any specifics about that project at this time uh, right now, the Secretary of the Navy has collected historic fabric from a number of museum ships, which will be combined uh, into a piece in the Secretary's office. Uh, I, I hope to be able to give you more news on this in the future. Right now, I can just say that Battleship New Jersey, among other uh, historic vessels, is supporting this. So, the actual ship names. The first name uh, that Secretary Brightwaith announced is for a new frigate to be named Chesapeake after one of the first six frigates of the U.S. Navy. There has only been one warship named Chesapeake as far as I know, and uh, that's for a very important reason, and that's why uh, this is the one name on the list that I don't really support. Uh, so Chesapeake is going to be a Constellation class frigate. Uh, if you watch this other video about naming conventions, you'll see some footage we took when uh, Battleship New Jersey's curatorial staff met the Secretary of the Navy in person on the museum ship USS Constellation in Baltimore. Uh, and that was the occasion of him announcing that the new frigates were going to be named after Constellation. And, and he uh, intimated in his speech that he would be interested in naming other frigates of that class after the first six. So already, Ches uh, Constellation and Congress have been authorized as FFG 62 and 63. And with the announcement of Chesapeake uh, as 64, he is continuing that trend. This is very different from the previous naming convention of naming frigates after people. Um, but it is an interesting trend to start. Or typically, famous ship names are reused in aircraft carriers and uh, amphibious assault ships. So the fact that he is extending this tradition to frigates since more and more aircraft carriers are being named after people as opposed to uh, famous ships is an important way to continue these names. Um, 
and neither Congress nor Chesapeake, I don't believe, has been used uh, since the age of sail. So again, three of the six original frigate names have been used. The uh, uh, name Constitution probably won't be used because the frigate Constitution is still in commission. One other point in history, Constitution was renamed as Old Constitution, so her name could be used. That ship was never completed, and our museum ship Constitution returned to uh, her original name. So it's unlikely, but not unheard of, that that'll happen again. Uh, President is another name from the original six frigates, and United States was the other one. Uh, Again, very few of these names have been reused. There have been a couple of Americas out there, but uh, I don't believe there have been any United States. And uh, part of the reason I don't believe we've reused the names United States, Chesapeake, or President is because all three of those vessels were captured. And typically, when one of your vessels is captured, you do not reuse that name on any of your future vessels. Uh, but the country that captures it starts using those names. For example, the U.S. Navy captured British frigates, Guerriere, Macedonian, uh, and then reused those names, um, among others, during the Age of Sail. The British captured President and Chesapeake, and you either used those ships or named new ships after them. So those names have traditionally been removed from the pool of names that the U.S. Navy can be can use and have been given to the British. The United States was captured by the Confederacy during the Civil War when Norfolk fell and uh, subsequently scuttled by them when the North took back Norfolk. So uh, again, a ship captured by an enemy power and that name hasn't been reused. Uh, so I, I'm not sold on reusing the name Chesapeake. Chesapeake was uh, the only one of the six frigate names personally and fully chosen by President George Washington. Uh, President Washington was given a list of eight or nine names. He selected five of those names, Constitution, Constellation, President, Congress, and United States. Uh, And then he added another name to the list, Chesapeake. That ship was uh, the only one not fully designed by Humphreys and uh, was yeah, is considered to be the worst of the original six frigates. Chesapeake was the only one of the original six frigates to be defeated twice. Once by HMS Leopard uh, when she was completely unprepared for battle and once by HMS Shannon when she was uh, prepared for battle. On the second occasion, the British played for keeps. Uh, Chesapeake's Chesapeake uh, was then used by the Royal Navy until she was no longer usable and wood from her is now used in a mill over in Great Britain and uh, the Secretary of the Navy has gone over and recovered some of that wood. So as a ship with a dubious legacy uh, I, I like what he's doing with the naming conventions of the new frigates. I'm not convinced that Chesapeake is the right name to reuse. Secretary Brightwaith chose to name a new Virginia class fast attack submarine after USS Silversides. Uh, the most famous Silversides was a World War II era submarine, and she sank the fifth most tonnage of any of the World War II submarines. She has been preserved as a museum in Muskegon, Michigan, and she is the, uh, she's arguably the most historically significant of all of the World War II era submarines on display in that she has the highest uh, record. Traditionally, modern submarines, uh, at least in the 80s and 90s, The boomers were named after states, the attack submarines after cities. Uh, 
prior to that, from uh, just after World War I, when we stopped naming submarines after letters and numbers and started giving them actual names, uh, they were always named after sea creatures. We did this through World War II and into the first half of the Cold War. And at that point, submarines replaced surface ships as the premier anti-surface ship warships in the Navy. And if we ever actually get into a first-class shooting war, it's likely that submarines will play a huge part in neutralizing enemy surface fleets. The U.S. Navy significantly has slowed down in designing and building major surface warships. And while we have some large destroyers and a new class of frigates on the way, uh, they do not make up nearly the proportion of the, naval's, the Navy's fighting powers as they once did. So the choice to name submarines, to go from naming them after fish to naming them after cities and states, uh, reflects that. But now cities and states are not being used for cruisers and battleships, which are no longer built. However, Secretary Brightwaith has uh, now named four of the new Block 5 Virginia-class submarines after um, famous World War II submarines. Barb had the fourth most kills, Tang the first most kills, Wahoo 23rd most, and now Silversides with five most. Uh, not most kills, but most tonnage credited to their names. So this is a trend in changing of naming conventions that I, I fully support. I, I think it's a good idea to return to all of the famous and historic uh, submarine names for attack submarines in particular. I do agree that uh, submarines are the premier anti-ship warships of the Navy, uh, but I don't think that necessarily needs to be reflected in their naming conventions. Next up is LPD-31, which will be named for the USS Pittsburgh. Again, cities typically were named after cruisers, surface war uh, warfare ships, and Pittsburgh is no exception, with CA number four, one of our first armored cruisers, and uh, CA-72, a World War II-era Baltimore-class heavy cruiser. Uh, but then, most recently, a Los Angeles-class attack submarine was named after Pittsburgh. Again, they were all named, or they tended to be named after cities. So, uh, that is a name that up till this point has followed the naming conventions, but now LPD-31 uh, is going to be named Pittsburgh. The LPDs tend to be named after cities, uh, but not cities with uh, historic namesakes that have had a lot of warships named after them like this. Uh, and this further shows that the U.S. Navy isn't in the surface warfare business anymore. We, we don't fight surface battles, uh, so we don't need cruisers, battleships, large numbers of destroyers. And so those famous names need to be used elsewhere, in this case in a landing ship, uh, one of the San Antonio-class LPDs, we do tend to do amphibious warfare. We either plan on invading countries using these ships or uh, supporting countries after nat natural disasters using these ships. So that, that is a job that the Navy has done considerably more of since World War II than actual war fighting. So another interesting naming convention choice. Next ship that uh, he chose to name, the Robert E. Simonek. She is ESB-7, an expeditionary sea base. Uh, this is a relatively new type of ship that's based on the hull of an oiler with a flight deck built on it. And uh, so, so these ships have a lot of room and they can be used for a lot of missions uh, as large bases, but not really as combatant warships. So again, uh, shows that the Navy moving away from combatant warships towards more uh, 
forward bases where you can station troops and aircraft. Uh, Robert E. Simonek has never had a ship named after him before because he's still alive. He earned the Medal of Honor and the Purple Heart during the Korean War for jumping on a grenade uh, that would have killed other members of his squad. Uh, he survived the wounds uh, and is still alive today at age 90. It's fairly uncommon, though not unheard of, to name a ship after somebody still alive. And uh, typically, individuals like him who have earned the Medal of Honor would have a frigate or a destroyer named after them. However, like I've been saying in this video, we, we aren't making as many of those. And the naming conventions are, again, shifting, as is the Navy's priorities. The other expeditionary sea bases are also named for Naval and Marine Corps heroes. Uh, the lead ship of the class is named after Louis B. Pooler, Chesty Pooler, uh, most decorated Marine, and uh, Marine Corps hero. These ships started out as USNS ships, uh, but it now seems like they're going to be actual USS uh, warships. The final ship that Secretary Brightwaith named uh, in his entire term as he will be leaving office along with the current president, um, was USNS Lene Lenape. The Lene Lenape are an uh, indigenous people's tribe from the Delaware River Valley. So most of southern New Jersey, eastern Pennsylvania, and even up into New York. Uh, Western colonists pushed them out in the 18th century, and by the Civil War, most of them had been relocated to the Indian Territory, now known as the state of Oklahoma. Lenin Lenape does follow the trend of naming uh, salvage vessels and tugboats after Native American tribes. She's going to be a Navajo class uh, salvage vessel, TATS-9. This particular tribe, whose land Battleship New Jersey sits on, New York Shipbuilding and uh, Philadelphia Shipyard, both sit on two places that built nearly half of the fast battleships of World War II. Um, they've never received a ship named after them before. Secretary Brightwaith probably chose that name because he's from this area originally. He's, he's from Pennsylvania and the uh, Delaware River Valley, so he's most likely familiar with this tribe. And it's interesting that he chose that name as the last that he will be choosing. Uh, before we wrap up, I guess I should give a little bit about how names are chosen today. I already told you the, the first couple of names were presented to George Washington, I believe by the Secretary of War Knox, because there wasn't a Secretary of the Navy yet. And then Washington got to choose which one he liked and even add one of his own. Who's going to tell Washington no? Nowadays, names are selected by Naval History and Heritage Command. The Navy's uh, primarily civilian, or the Navy's civilian historians who maintain the Navy's artifacts and, and other heritage items like that. Uh, Battleship New Jersey has somewhere around 70 objects on display that uh, are on loan from Naval History and Heritage Command. So they support museum ships. They also come up with the list of names for the Secretary of the Navy to choose from. The Secretary of the Navy picks um, conventions, ideas that he wants to use. So he would presumably say, hey, Naval History and Heritage Command, I want to continue to name tugboats and salvage vessels after Native American tribes. And then Naval History and Heritage would go through the list of uh, former ships that have been uh, named after tribes and present him with that. In this case, it seems like he decided he didn't want to go with those names. He wanted to uh, instead pick Lenny Lenape. Uh, in other cases, he says, I want to name our new class of frigates after the original six frigates. They give him the list of names, and he's been picking what order they go in. Secretary Brightwaith has not followed the naming conventions of his predecessor, uh, and it will be interesting to see in the future if whoever follows Secretary Brightwaith, continues to use these same naming conventions or 
pick some new ones. What famous name do you think the next Secretary of the Navy should use in the future? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from viewers like you. Thank you for your support. Uh, it allows us to continue to make multiple videos a week. Um, and if you'd like to get notified when those videos are coming out, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.